either you want to ask a question and you will ask your question yourself, but you just want to, you know, I'm going to put everybody in a certain, um, not an order, but I'm going to have a list of who's going to ask and I'm going to ask you to ask your question yourself. You can send me a message for that, but you can also send me a message with your question itself and I'll ask it on your behalf to the speakers if you want some anonymity because you want to ask a question that you think, I don't know, you want some anonymity, okay? You can send me a message and I'll ask the speakers uh, the question for you, okay? Uh, but please do so and uh, even if you told me you want to ask a question, just send me a message, it's easier that way and I have a list and I can just name you and you can ask a question or I will ask a question myself, okay? And is everybody going to be here? Who's going to be here for the speakers? We've got a couple of speakers that are going to be here, but mainly, I think, like you said, the questions can be general about questions pretty much anything. Ah, yes. So, uh, we'll come back, and uh, I hope everybody had a good lunch. So, let me continue, and uh, this afternoon I feel much more comfortable because I'm speaking about uh, reality, okay. <laughs> and uh, in general, I'm talking about, uh, you know, three categories of uh, compounds, uh, you know, uh, materialization of uh, quantum spin liquid. One is an uh, organic triangular system. And the second one, you know, I would like to discuss about uh, Kagome lattice, you know, quantum spin liquid. And at the end, you know, I, I would like to discuss about the uh, type of quantum spin liquid on honeycomb lattice. But before uh, speaking about reality, uh, let me give you, you know, a few comments, uh, you know, how to identify uh, quantum spin liquid uh, experimentally. So somehow uh, we are looking for state of nothingness. Uh, Suddenly so I get the question, why are you looking for such a boring state, uh, nothing there? Okay, but uh, you know, I think the first thing uh, you know, experiment that does access is uh, measurement of magnetic susceptibility. Okay, and uh, if you do see uh, famous uh, Curie-wise uh, behavior at high temperature, that is kind of evidence for local moment. And in general, if you have you know uh, magnetic ordering, uh, you are supposed to see kink in magnetic susceptibility, okay? So that's kind of an undergraduate you know, class. But uh, this is often called the Curie plot. So plot of one over chi, you know, versus temperature, okay? And uh, you, you can find this even in the Kittel textbook. You know, if you plot one over chi versus temperature, okay, uh, normally anti-ferromagnet, uh, you see kind of linear behavior and uh, expect to uh, curly wise temperature. So the extrapolation closes, you know, at uh, minus, you know, curly wise temperature, okay? And uh, this is uh, some sort of uh, mean field transition temperature, and also a very good measure of uh, interaction. But of course, if, you know, you have, you know, uh, coexistence of uh, ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic uh, interaction within the same system, you know, often, uh, you know, uh, those uh, curious temperature is, uh, you know, kind of a difference between those two and uh, doesn't, you know, uh, give you a good measure of, uh, you know, mean field transition temperature. But otherwise, uh, you know, this is very good measure of, uh, you know, uh, interaction. And uh, this uh, ratio, 
you know, mean filtration temperature versus uh, real filtration temperature, nail temperature, is often called uh, you know, a frustration parameter. So that characterizes the degree of frustration. And in a, you know, a mean field like a classical anti ferromagnet, you know, they do show magnetic ordering, you know, evidenced you know, by this you know, kink here. Okay? And the ratio of uh, curious temperature and near temperature is over the order one. So this is a boring uh, mean field magnet. But like if you go anti, uh, frustrated uh, anti ferromagnet like a triangular this, you know, magnet, okay? So uh, because, you know, torsion is suppressed to lower temperature, so therefore the ratio between Curie wise, you know, versus, you know, nail temperature is more than one. So typically, you know, uh, we often find a uh, world of uh, 10, you know, even kind of 1,000 uh, in frustrated magnets. So uh, this uh, frustration parameter often shows up in the literature. Okay. Now, uh, you know, if you know uh, you you find that you know no ordering like this, you know, if you know uh, you, you miss you know this kind of kinky magnetic susceptibility, now you have a big chance of uh, you know uh, discovering uh, you know quantum spin leakage. In terms of frustration parameter, if you don't see anything, uh, frustration parameter is kind of uh, infinite. Okay. Yes. Look at uh, some real electromagnet that is, has impurity. Uh, it depends on degree of disorder. And a small disorder, we don't care. But a big disorder, you know, uh, it kind of smeared out. And often, uh, if that is the case, uh, we see kind of grassy behavior. And a grassy behavior means that if you measure susceptibility on cooling, on warming, uh, you see some hysteresis. And uh, that kind of uh, you know, grassy behavior is also a signature of uh, freezing of spin moment, but in a random way. Uh, but, but, you know, like, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, at, at uh, you, know, uh, you know, there was a question about that, you know, uh, in the kind of a presence of uh, strong frust uh, frustration, uh, fluctuation due to dimensionality uh, disorder, uh, often, you know, those uh, kink in the susceptibility is kind of smeared out, as you pointed out. That, that's a very good question. And uh, heat capacity. Okay, if you know fluctuation is you know, around, you know it again is kind of smeared out. So in that sense, uh, you know, uh, specific heat you know among is easy to measure. Uh, they are not you know so sensitive, you know, to long range ordering. Uh, if you know fluctuation is kind of significant, and uh, maybe you know you can go neutron scattering or X-ray magnetic you know, scattering. However, it's easy to say oh there is you know magnetic peak. Okay, but it's not that easy. It's kind of negative proof. So, oh, there is no magnetic peak. Okay, and uh, often actually, in order to see, you know, kind of absence of any kind of ordering, uh, many experiments to go either NMO or muon spin rotation. Uh, they are quite sensitive to uh, internal field. And even, you know, if you know the ordering is like a glassy, you know, there is a distribution of uh, magnetic field, internal magnetic field. And you can see uh, those, you know, glassy freezing as, you know, blowing of peak, okay? So uh, they are kind of often used to prove, uh, you know, absence of uh, magnetic ordering, okay? And uh, you, you'll see that in a the, in the minute, okay? And once you establish absence of, uh, you know, uh, ordering, uh, you are highly likely, you know, uh, you know uh, discover that, you know, quantum spin leak. Then, you know, uh, you might, uh, you know, characterize, uh, you know, elementary excitation, right? Now, of course, uh, observing a continuum is uh, direct evidence of a fraction orientation. So uh, you may want to go, you know, uh, neutron elastic scattering to characterize, uh, you know, continuum. But on the other hand, uh, 
you know, you have to be careful. Neutron colleagues are quite uh, greedy, and uh, they often require uh, like uh, cubic CC, you know, big, you know, uh, crystal. But if you find a new compound, uh, it's not you know, that easy to get a uh, cubic you know, CC uh, crystal. And uh, so if uh, you, know, you have difficulty to go neutron inelastic uh, scattering, uh, but still you can sense uh, elementary excitation. For example, you know, from uh, you know, uh, susceptibility. Uh, if uh, it is kind of a gap, you, know, uh, you see exponential suppression of uh, susceptibility. Uh, reflecting gap. But if you have a gapless spin liquid, you know, normally you know, susceptibility go to a finite value at t equals zero limit. And from that, somehow you, you can tell uh, whether you know, your spin liquid is kind of a gapful or a gapless. Or the same is true for uh, specific heat. And if you have a kind of a gapless spin liquid, like if you have uh, spin on Fermi surface, right? So you see T-linear specific heat, like, you know, metal, okay? Uh, metal, because of presence of, uh, you know, finite, you know, density of state of electron, you see T-linear specific heat. And uh, in some of, uh, you know, uh, quantum spin liquid candidate, uh, you see uh, T-linear specific heat, like, just like a metal, though they are insular. And also now, nowadays, uh, you know, measuring uh, thermal conductivity is uh, you know, quite uh, fashionable. Uh, do you notice, you know, from the talk by uh, Yuji Machida last week? Since, you know, spin doesn't carry any charge, right? So uh, you cannot use a current meter to measure, you know, property of uh, your quantum spin liquid. But of course, uh, spin can carry entropy. And uh, it turned out, uh, you know, thermal conductivity is a very good, you know, probe uh, to, to measure, you know, spin excitation. Okay. And in particular, you know, specific heat, you know, measures only enthalpy. So they don't care whether your spin excitation localized or itinerant. But, you know, thermal conductivity, uh, you have to create a heat flow. That means, you know, uh, if, you know, your excitation detected by thermal conductivity, okay, uh, that means, you know, your excitation is kind of mobile, okay? So that's kind of a kind of important point, okay? But anyway, so uh, using the technique, uh, you know, somehow uh, in the last, you know, almost, you know, 10 years, uh, experimentalists, you know, discovered uh, many, you know, uh, realistic uh, quantum spin liquid, you know, candidate. Okay, and uh, this is kind of a table, you know, uh, Leon Valens uh, called it, uh, you know, eight years ago. But yeah, since then we have, you know, a couple of compounds, okay, discovered. On top of that, you know, we have, you know, uh, recently imaged the like, you know, compound. So now, you know, we have uh, plenty of examples. Okay, and among them, uh, let me speak about the uh, first uh, RBB type, uh, you know, quantum spin liquid uh, in organics, uh, which is supposed to be the cleanest uh, quantum spin liquid. Uh, then, uh, actually, this column is long. Uh, let me speak about, uh, you know, uh, inorganic, uh, you know, Kagome lattice compound called, called the Hybert, you know, Smithite. Okay. And uh, then, you know, finally, uh, I would like to discuss Kitai uh, Fino quantum spin liquid. So uh, let me begin with uh, organic uh, system uh, as, you know, cleanest example of uh, quantum spin liquid. And I'm going to speak about those, you know, two compounds. Okay. So uh, I have to confess, uh, I don't know how to read it. I was uh, horrible in chemistry class, and uh, I don't understand the organic chemistry, okay? But uh, you know, what I know is that, uh, you know, they are like uh, ionic you know, crystal, and uh, so, like a sodium chloride. And uh, so th that's why they are called the uh, charge transfer salt, okay? So, uh, you know, the molecule kind of neutral, 
but charge is kind of transferred. Electrons are kind of transferred from a yellow molecule to a white in a molecule. Okay. So uh, like uh, this uh, B E D T T T F system. Okay. So you have a kind of a stack of uh, you know B E D T you know molecule layer and uh, some uh, acceptor layer, you know, uh, colored in white, and uh, donor layer, acceptor layer. And the charge is kind of, uh, electron kind of transferred from uh, uh, yellow to uh, white, okay? And it, normally, you know, the molecule has, you know, even number of electrons, right? But by transferring one charge, you know, uh, they have, you know, uh, odd number of electrons. And, uh, because uh, those kind of molecules, you know, are kind of highly kind of localized, and uh, as a result, uh, you know, uh, you know, they are, you know, more insulated. So here is, uh, you know, real space in the picture of uh, those, uh, you know, yellow molecule in real space, and uh, as you see from two, actually, you know, you have a pair of molecules you know, uh, called a dimer, okay, and uh, those, you know, pair of dimer share one electron or to be placed one hole, okay, by transferring charge to acceptor layer, okay? And uh, those kind of electrons are kind of highly kind of localized and they form uh, you know, electron crystal, motor insulating state, okay? And uh, as you see, you know, uh, in the real space, uh, they align like this. And, uh, you know, uh, by, you know, calculating a quantum you know, chemistry, uh, you must know, you know, main source of uh, interaction with, you know, neighbor is like this. And there are kind of two type of interaction. Okay, one is, you know, called T, and the other is, you know, T prime. Okay, so like, like this. So therefore, if, you know, T and the T prime is kind of comparable, okay, and now, you know, uh, magnetic interaction between spin one half, you know, moment uh, kind of uh, equal on the triangle like this. And this could be a great, uh, you know, playground for, you know, uh, geometrical frustration, okay? Two-dimensional S equal one-half triangular mode, okay? And in fact, for, okay, and, the, the, you know, the basic uh, structure is the same for this uh, palladium uh, D-methene compound, okay? And this uh, compound, okay, uh, by changing uh, anion, you know, uh, you know, chi transfer layer, okay, uh, you can control, you know, kind of lattice constant. Uh, and uh, you can change, you know, ratio between T and T prime, okay? And as I said, you know, when T equal to T prime, you know, you have a perfect, you know, triangular geometry, okay? And as you see, because there are a number of compounds with different, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, acceptor layer, and uh, if you know T prime is you know much smaller than T, like a 0 0.7, 0 0.8, okay. As you see, okay, this this means uh, anti ferromagnetic transition. So uh, frustration due to strong is not you know strong enough. Okay, they do experience uh, anti ferromagnetic order. But, like uh, coming close to uh, T prime equal one. Okay, uh, somehow uh, this, uh, you know, uh, me feel like transition is kind of suppressed gradually by increasing, uh, you know, uh, frustration. And eventually, you know, around, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 90%, okay, uh, those uh, structure phase transition kind of uh, disappeared, okay? And uh, this especially compound, uh, they say is located, you know, around here, okay? So it's not, you know, perfectly, you know, one to one to one ratio, you know, triangle, but uh, they have one to one to point to nine ratio triangle, but still they do see quantum spin liquid state. And uh, how do I know the grand state of those, you know, organic compounded quantum spin liquid? Okay, so uh, here, here is, uh, you know, plot of uh, NMO signal. Okay, so uh, somehow each, you know, correspond to magnetic field, uh, your kind of nuclear fields. Uh, this case, a carbon nuclear field, okay? 
Okay? And then so, like, if you have a magnetic ordering, you know, uh, you know, they're going to produce, uh, you know, internal magnetic field. And normally, in anti ferro magnet, you know, you have a different uh, magnetic field. So therefore, peak split. Or if you do have a glassy environment, you know, like uh, spin fluid in a glassy manner, you have, you know, distribution of a magnetic field, you know, from, you know, side to side. So you do see a broadening of peak. Okay? And uh, this, uh, you know, compound, okay, uh, this compound, uh, T is not equal to T prime. I think I like uh, over the other point, you know, seven. Okay? And uh, on cooling, okay, around the 25 point K, you see split of peak, okay? And uh, this circuit okay, represents magnetic ordering. So they, they created the internal kind of magnetic field, and as a result, the peak in the split, okay? This is very clear signature of magnetic ordering. But if you make, you know, compound almost, you know, uh, T prime equal to T, you know, ideal triangular situation, okay, uh, down to 30 mili K, you know, uh, you don't see anything. So that kind of signature of uh, nothing, the state of nothing. And the uh, you know, same compound, uh, a different compound, you know, uh, par paradigm compound, Okay, you don't see anything down to 20 millikelvin. Yes? Is it possible? Yeah, okay, they, they that, that kind of study, yeah. And uh, so they, they do study some sort of a quantum a critical point. And in particular, organic is uh, extremely soft, right? So even a small amount of pressure, you can change lattice constant a lot. So that kind of big advantage of uh, organics. Okay, so, so okay, those compound, uh, you know, you know, we do see kind of the state of nothing. That, that's why they go, uh, this should be quantum spin indicated. Okay? Now, as I said, you know, uh, this uh, hallmark of quantum spin liquid is kind of fractionalization. And if, you know, we have, you know, uh, RV like ground state, is equal one excitation, split into two spin and a half, you know, excitation called the spin. And that's kind of very unique. And uh, they could form some sort of a Fermi surface of spin, like, you know, 1D, right? And uh, can I detect, you know, fractionalization in quantum spin liquid? So uh, <laughs> let me give you a first uh, textbook explanation of uh, free electrons. You know, if you take a look at the uh, the textbook, uh, there are a discussion on the free electrons. And uh, you have, you know, uh, Pauli susceptibility from, uh, you know, uh, conduction electron. And that is scaled by density of states. Okay? And there is a T linear specific heat, of, people often call it gamma. Okay? That is, again, uh, scaled by density of states. And uh, those kind of priesthoods are kind of constant, like a Boltzmann constant, right? So therefore, if you have a uh, you know, free electron, the ratio of, you know, Pauli susceptibility in magnetic susceptibility and uh, specific heat, you know, uh, T linear constant, gamma, should be constant, okay? And uh, in metal, uh, we often, you know, uh, take a ratio of uh, chi and the gamma, and the call it to you know, Wilson ratio. And if we have a uh, you know, free electron metal, uh, this ratio, okay, normalized by this uh, constant, should be one. But in reality, if you have a kind of Fermi liquid and the interaction, uh, this factor you know, they can, can be from one. But normally, it's of the order of one. So uh, observing a uh, Wilson ratio close to one, is a very good signature of uh, having a uh, Fermi liquid. Okay. Now, so this is for free electrons. And if you have you know, Fermi surface spin, in essence, uh, yeah, we, should, uh, we can have you know, uh, quite uh, similar phenomenology because spin has spin, right? So uh, they can react. 
to magnetic field, like a free electron. And uh, they have entropy. Right? So uh, the difference is, uh, you know, uh, those uh, quantum spin liquid is uninsulated. However, we have, you know, uh, chi neutral excitation called spinons, and uh, they behave like, uh, you know, free electron, right? And uh, can, can we see something like that? Okay, so here's the picture. Okay, so uh, okay, this is susceptibility. At high temperature, you know, you, you can see uh, Curie-like behavior, you know, susceptibility going to increase running. And uh, the, there's a kind of broad peak, and the eventually goes down, and the susceptibility approaches to you know, finite value, okay, of the order of three to the 10 to the minus four, okay? So there seems to be a finite susceptibility. And uh, again, you know, let me emphasize uh, no kink observed, okay, consistent with absence of any magnetic ordering, okay? And the uh, you know, susceptibility approaches a finite value, means, uh, you know, we seem to have uh, some sort of finite, you know, density of excitation and the uh, spin liquid kind of gapless, okay? And the major specific heat was the same compound, okay? Uh, this is, you know, C over T versus T square plot, you know, uh, kind of a classical way of plotting specific heat at low temperature. And uh, extrapolation to T equals zero, okay, uh, give you gamma values, C over T values. You know, uh, this is the standard analysis for metal, okay? And, uh, you know, those, you know, compound, okay, uh, you know, uh, T prime is not equal to T, and they do show magnetic ordering. And the magnetically ordered, you know, compound, you know, uh, this specific heat, uh, C over T, go to zero. That means uh, no finite gamma value, or no density of state. But uh, those, you know, colored compound is kind of a spin liquid compound. Then you see uh, they are excited with finite value around uh, 10 millijoule per mole square. Okay? So somehow uh, both susceptibility and a specific heat show to, you know, uh, we have kind of finite density of states. Yes? Yeah, actually, some people, some, some theorists uh, discussed that. But uh, we, we didn't see any kind of oscillation at all. That. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are discussions like that, yeah. Yes? Uh, could you speak loudly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so there's a kind of a clear signature of magnetic ordering here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of a reference here. But, but I'm talking about this compound. Yeah. And uh, this is the kind of susceptibility I'm talking about. Okay, so powder like susceptibility. And uh, if I take ratio, actually, somehow, you know, the ratio is uh, almost one. Amazing, right? It's insulator, uh, no electron running. But ratio is kind of close to one, and the uh, Fermi liquid, uh, yeah, so we have no adjustable parameter, but the ratio is just, you know, close to one, okay. So, like, maybe, yeah, yeah, some, if you are kind of experimentalist, uh, if you could remember, okay, uh, like a 10 to the minus four in the susceptibility, is roughly 10 millijoule, okay, in terms of gamma, if you know, reason ratio one, okay. So take a look at 10 to the minus 4 and the 10, you, you immediately see, it, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of Wilson ratio, you know, uh, the contribution is kind of consistent with each other, okay? Uh, this is kind of another compound, you know, uh, I showed. And again, uh, you know, you, you, you see a uh, factor of two, you know, uh, factor of two larger, you know, uh, you know, chi zero, you know, t equals zero value, but again, over the 10 to the minus four, but, you know, gamma is also kind of uh, enhanced by factor of two, so therefore the ratio is again close to one, okay? 
So although we don't have any free electron in the system, but clearly there is some excitation which satisfies the you know, Wilson ratio, go one. So this is, could be a very strong uh, signature of uh, we have some sort of uh, Fermi surface of spinons in those compounds. And then even bigger supplies that brought, you know, by uh, Yuji Matsuda, uh, he was a speaker last week. And he measured uh, thermal conductivity of, you know, the same union compound. Okay. And if you take a look at the uh, Kitteo textbook, okay, thermal conductivity is scaled by specific heat and the velocity, okay, velocity is a kind of a, you know, uh, slope of dispersion, and the mean free path, okay? So uh, kind of thermal conductivity essentially pull up the specific heat. However, they have to carry heat. So there is a factor, mean free path, okay? And if, you know, uh, your excitation is kind of localized, okay, mean free plus zero, Okay, so therefore uh, you don't detect uh, your excitation in thermal conductivity channel, okay? And then so uh, they plot the quantity, kappa divided by T, okay? So uh, C divided T is nothing but gamma, right? So gamma times, you know, mean free path, okay? And uh, here is, you know, quantum spin degree compound, and uh, you see finite uh, intercept. And we more or less know velocity, okay, from, uh, you, know, you know, energy scale of interaction. And we know what is gamma, you know, okay, from here. So we can estimate, you know, what is L. And uh, usually kind of estimated uh, L should be as large as one micron. So this uh, fractional uh, spin one have like uh, excitation can travel freely over one micron. So amazing, right? So that, that's why they start discussing uh, you know, whether you know, can we have some sort of a magnetic field effect. So but this means uh, you know, our excitation is kind of a highly mobile. And we have kind of Fermi surface, you know, which satisfies the, uh, you know, Wilson ratio, and they are kind of highly mobile. Oh, in that sense, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I believe uh, this, uh, you know, organic uh, triangular magnet is kind of a best example. Yeah. 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 So I think it's roughly one nanometer. Yeah, like oxide is uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and uh, yeah. So not one order magnitude, but uh, you know, factor of two, three. Uh, also, actually, yeah, uh, another way to take a look at that is uh, like uh, if you measure kind of a metal, okay, uh, you, you are supposed to have a you know finite uh, t-linear term in thermal conductivity uh, due to finite gamma. Term. And uh, this contribution, 0 0.2, is not you know, as large as like uh, copper. But if you bring a uh, dirty metal, uh, like uh, you, you know, brass, you know, this is a brass, uh, brass actually at low temperature shows you know, uh, quite in a similar magnitude of tyrannia term. So like uh, this you know, quantum magnet, it's insulator. However, as you know, thermally conducting, uh, the, you know, brass, okay? So uh, something, you know, must be carrying heat, right? That's great, isn't it, right? So in the sense, uh, you know, this, I, I think at the moment, uh, this represents, uh, you know, kind of physics of uh, spin on you know, uh, in a nice manner. And of course, there are many uh, issues kind of left, you know, even in organic, uh, you know, spin liquid. For example, uh, so I, I showed you kind of two compounds, okay? And this compound uh, we saw, you know, highly mobile kind of, uh, you know, 
uh, excitations. Okay. And the atrotep budget, this is a uh, you know, measurement of uh, you know, NMO 1 over T1 uh, relaxation rate. Okay. So uh, this kind of reflects some sort of uh, uh, density of spin excitations. And somehow, in the temporary dependence around the 1K, uh, you see some uh, clear anomaly. And at the moment, you know, people don't understand what they did. Okay? So uh, I show data below 1K, and uh, that, that you know, nicely follow you know, uh, this uh, Wilson ratio equal 1. But above that, you know, we see some anomaly there. And at the moment, they don't know what they did. And some of uh, you know, romantic theorist uh, discusses that this could be a fate transition of a spin on fame surface. Nothing like that, but still, you know, uh, we, we don't understand you know, what they need. Other issue is kind of a, yeah, this I, I, I can link uh, my lecture to uh, Andre. Somehow, all those kind of organic compounds. Uh, right next to those quantum spin liquid, uh, you always find the superconductivity. Like this. Now, some people discuss uh, those, those uh, quantum spin liquid physics might have something to do with uh, superconductivity. But on the other hand, uh, you know, some compound uh, with, you know, T prime, you know, much plus one T, and uh, therefore shows, you know, long-range ordering, under pressure, they show superconductivity as well. Uh, yeah, in, 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 in that sense, uh, you know, you find superconductivity not only when you have quantum spin liquid you know, state, but also, you know, even when you have, you know, magnetically ordered state, you find superconductivity. Yes? Uh, it, uh, this 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 uh, phase, yes. yeah. This this is a uh, weak, very weak, you know, fast order. So uh, there is uh, some uh, critical point, you know, most critical point, you know, here, and uh, above that you, you see kind of crossover. That's what uh, this phase entails. And uh, some people discussed that, uh, you know, uh, kind of a critical point, you know, here. Yeah. In terms of most criticality. Okay. Yes. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually not not many are known. Yeah. But however, you know, uh, you know those uh, quantum spin liquid, you know, material, there are you know three major phases you know known so far. One is uh, magnetically ordered. Uh, second one is quantum spin liquid. Uh, third one is uh, so-called, uh, you know, uh, charge ordered. So uh, you have kind of a one electron per site, but this uh, electron moves to next site and the form a, uh, you know, very strong, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't say dimer, but uh, you have kind of two electron, zero electron, two electron, zero electron, that kind of charge order state. And uh, I'm not sure actually this uh, specific case, you know, represents a charge order the case, but I suspect that uh, this could be charge order the state. Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, there, there are, you know, many theories. Uh, of course, this, uh, you know, story of RVB actually start, you know, from that. So in that sense, uh, there are kind of many stories uh, to connect uh, RVB type spin liquid and the uh, superconductivity. And uh, Yon Bak uh, gave uh, a bit specific case. But uh, in, in general, people discuss that. But on the other hand, uh, uh, 
uh, we, I don't know any experiment evidence which does support uh, you know, real link between you know, uh, quantum spin leak and superconductivity. As I told you, like, uh, this phase could be magnetically ordered state. But still, you know, I find superconductivity. Okay. Of course, you can take you know, this you know, in, in a different way. Okay. But, uh, uh, any question? Okay. Yeah, but if you Google QSL in a superconductivity, you'll find the many theoretical you know, papers on that. So if you're interested in, yeah. Yes. Okay, so, yes. Okay. So let me give you a second example. Okay. Now, you know, uh, moving out, you know, from a triangle, uh, let me speak about uh, Kagome lattice. And the Kagome lattice is, in some sense, you know, particularly interesting uh, because of the confusion among, you know, uh, beginner theorists. Okay, uh, I, I haven't collected the, all the paper, but uh, you know, still there is a kind of uh, big debate among, you know, theorists whether you know uh, Kagome Heisenberg anti-ferromagnet uh, should be, you know, uh, gapless U1 quantum spin liquid or you know G2 gapless spin liquid. And maybe, you know, the easiest way is uh, to do experiment, <laughs> right? And, uh, and uh, well, you know, and uh, some time ago, uh, those, uh, you know, chemistry colleagues learned, uh, you know, kind of a mineral uh, called the hybrid smithite, okay? So this compound has been known uh, from a mineral you know, so geophysicists know that this, you know, for long. And somehow uh, they created, you know, the compound, cleaner compound in the lab, okay? And uh, the structure of this compound is kind of interesting. So essentially, you know, uh, their structure is, you know, uh, pyrochloral lattice, okay? Three-dimensional pyrochloral lattice, okay? like a pyrochloral irrigate, okay? But as I said, uh, you know, if you take a look at the you know, pyrochloral lattice along you know, one, one, one direction, uh, you have you know, stacking of triangular layer and Kagome layer. And in this compound, uh, Kagome layer is kind of fully occupied you know, kappa two plus, S equal one half. And the triangular layer is supposed to be occupied by non-magnetic D10 zinc plus, zinc two plus. But somehow, uh, you know, nature doesn't allow completely clean, you know, uh, triangular layer. And uh, we, we know, uh, you know, some zinc, you know, uh, invade the territory of a zinc, okay? So there is some uh, chemical disorder there. But anyway, so as a first approximation, uh, in this compound uh, called high uh, smithite, you have, you know, Kagome lattice of kappa 2 plus. Now, uh, following, you know, uh, recipe, you know, I told you at the beginning. So here is the kind of plot of, you know, one over chi bus temperature. And uh, this uh, one over chi extrapolates something like, uh, you know, minus, you know, 200, to be precise, uh, minus 180K. So uh, somehow, average in scale of magnetic interaction is anti-ferromagnetic over the order of 180K, okay? But you don't see anything, okay? Down to T equals zero, no knocking, you know, anything, okay? So, uh, yeah, in this sense, uh, you know, a fluorescent parameter is kind of infinite, uh, you know, in this compound. And uh, they checked, you know, uh, like a magnetic scattering, mu SL, and uh, no signature, and this is kind of NMO. And uh, it's a bit complicated because, uh, you know, uh, copper occupies uh, different uh, chemical site, but you don't see any kind of broadening. Uh, you, know, uh, you see kind of some broadening, but uh, no, no real splitting, you know, down to low temperature. 
So they say, you know, uh, ground state, you know, should be quantum spin liquid. But compared with uh, organic, you know, we have to admit, you know, uh, those inorganic, uh, you see kind of some browsing and, uh, you know, environment is not you know, as clean as, you know, organic compound. But since uh, big, you know, crystal for high versimicide is kind of available, and, uh, uh, yeah, Yon San Lee at Stanford, uh, they did the uh, Newton inelastic scattering measurement. Okay, so this is kind of a K vector, 110 direction. This is the energy. And uh, this uh, green means uh, you, you, you see, you know, kind of finite excitation. And as you see, you know, uh, magnon dispersion is not, you know, well defined. But instead, uh, you have uh, quite a broad, you know, continuum here. And they say, oh, you know, we observed uh, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, spin on continuum in neutron scattering, and that this could be evidence of fractional excitation. Okay? That, that's why people believe uh, this could be quantum spin liquid. Now, uh, as I said, you know, uh, theoretically, you know, there is a kind of confusion well, uh, there is a kind of small gap in spin excitation or not. Uh, recently, you know, uh, those people try to see kind of some gap in NMO channel. Okay, so this is kind of night shift, you know, uh, susceptibility as a function of temperature. Uh, this is kind of an expansion. And, uh, Somehow, at you know low field, okay, it's a bit complicated, but somehow susceptibility seems to die out exponentially, like this. And from this, you know, they claimed, you know, oh yeah, at low field uh, there should be spin gap, okay, and by applying a uh, field. Yeah, somehow this exponential decay is kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, fade out. And instead, uh, you know, somehow, you know, they try to, you know, decay, you know, uh, much more slowly. <laughs> they did some uh, fitting and extracted the, you know, kind of, uh, you know, excitation energy out of this, you know, from three point, you know, <laughs> they are kind of brave enough. Um, and the plot, you know, uh, excitation, you know, energy, excitation temperature as a function of magnetic field. And they say, you know, uh, extrapolation of uh, zero field, they get, you know, a gap of 10 Kelvin. And with applying field, somehow gap is kind of suppressed and disappears around 10 Tesla. But remember, Remember, so uh, you, you, you know, uh, one Tesla in terms of, uh, you know, uh, Kelvin, uh, what is, you know, one Tesla? I think uh, 0.56 sin of Kelvin, right? So uh, like uh, 10 Tesla is roughly 10K, right? So if you have uh, some sort of a secret gap, and uh, apply 10 Tesla, you know, 10 Tesla, you, you, you can suppress, you know, gap. And uh, somehow, you know, that's kind of consistent. So from that, you know, they claim you know, they would have the, some sort of uh, singlet-like, you know, gap in zero field. That could be suppressed by applying magnetic field. And if, you know, uh, their interpretation is kind of correct, okay, uh, G2, Gap of spin liquid kind of correct, okay? But uh, somehow because of this, you know, big error, but, you know, that debate kind of still ongoing, okay? But you can see how, you know, uh, we, we can take a look at the uh, all kind of data, right? Now. So, uh, yeah, somehow, uh, as I told you, you know, uh, RV state that, uh, you don't have, you know, uh, exact solution. And, uh, you know, maybe I can say, you know, that's why it is interesting, you know. 
But on the other hand, uh, you know, we cannot do kind of fine kind of argument uh, based on kind of a theoretical you know, attempt. And recently, you know, uh, Kitai uh, quantum spin liquid didn't show up. That's why you know everybody went to that direction so far. And as I said, you know, in, in this morning, uh, we have a spin one half moment on top of Hanukkah Morales. Okay, and uh, there is a kind of a, you know conflict of uh, bond between X bond, Y bond, G bond. And uh, by introducing uh, two kind of Majorana, you know, you can have, uh, you know, uh, kind of exact you know, grand state. So you don't have to rely on that kind of numerics. And then you, you, you are supposed to see two kind of elemental excitation uh, reflecting, uh, you know, fractionalization. One is, you know, localized Majorana, and, uh, you know, called a G2 flux. Uh, the other is kind of iterant in my run. Okay? And uh, of course, uh, you know, suddenly, you know, physics of my run shows up. And, uh, you know, uh, like, a, you know, community wanted to materialize it. But, you know, in general, uh, spin one half, pure spin one half moment, you know, uh, they form just in high level anti ferromagnet because, uh, you know, you need a uh, kind of field coupling and anisotropy, right, to realize the uh, Ising uh, spin one half. And somehow, uh, you know, around the same period, you know, kind of, uh, you know, physics of, uh, you know, strong spin coupling system in iridium 4 plus oxide emerged. And somehow, uh, those two flow, like a breakthrough in quantum magnetism, and uh, kind of a new you know, arena in correlated electron physics, you know, namely you know, heavy transmetal oxide married, and uh, created the uh, interesting playground for the ex uh, exploration of uh, type spin liquid. So uh, the point is, uh, you know, in, She's a uh, pure spin one half, you know, uh, in general, you know, uh, they are coupled, uh, you know, in Heisenberg, right? So instead of spin one half, you know, let's try to use, uh, you know, uh, some sort of a spin one half like, but the spin over the entangled object, right? So you, you, you have, uh, you know, kind of a LS coupled uh, J object in heavy transmetal element. And there's kind of hidden degree of freedom, like orbital degree of freedom. And using that, you know, uh, can we realize, uh, you know, uh, Ising spin one half, you know, like, you know, uh, system. So the point is uh, following. So I think as, you know, Yonbak uh, emphasized uh, yesterday, so those uh, iridium 4 plus you know, oxide, uh, you have, you know, five, you know, T2G electron, five. And uh, as, as you know, uh, in uh, octahedral coordination, like perovskite, uh, those, you know, uh, five, four degenerate T2 orbital split into EG and T2G. But for 5D, you know, your wave function is quite big, okay? And, uh, and uh, you know, they win against, you know, front coupling. And as a result, uh, you have kind of low spin state, all five electrons accommodated into T2G orbital. Now, this T2 orbital, you know, triple degenerate, uh, can be treated as if, you know, they are P orbital, uh, L equal one, but minus sign. The reason, actually, you know, uh, Yonbak kind of explained yesterday. And uh, somehow, believe it or not, you know, uh, those, you know, heavy transmetal element like uh, iridium, uh, spin of coupling is as large as half electron volt. Okay, so they are kind of compound to cool on you, you know, even kind of heavy energy. Okay, and uh, therefore uh, they do kind of split into J effective one half state, uh, meaning uh, you know, uh, you know, orbital moment and the spin moment antiparallel to each other, and the J effective three half state, uh, spin moment and the orbital moment in parallel to each other. 
Okay? And if you have five, you know, uh, those uh, three and a half, you know, it's kind of counted, so they are completely filled. And then you have, you know, one electron in J equal one half, you know, state. Okay? And then you have kind of one electron per orbital situation. You know, that, that's why, you know, uh, mod state is kind of a relatively stable in this kind of a compound. Uh, despite, you know, uh, Coulomb U is quite modest of the order of one to two electron volt. Now, uh, the beauty of uh, this, you know, J1 half moment, okay, in a pure J1 half limit, if you calculate a G factor, uh, G factor two, and uh, plus minus one half, so they are just like spin one half. But of course, uh, you know, they are kind of a complex state made of orbital moment and spin moment. And this is kind of a wave function of J1 half state. And uh, you have an you know, equal mixture of XY, YG, GX. But the point is, uh, you know, uh, you have kind of ups here in X in orbital, but uh, downspin here in YG, GX orbital. OK, so you have a mixture of uh, upspin and downspin. OK, so therefore, uh, those uh, spin orientation is quite orbital dependent. And that, that is kind of a key to, to get the complicated uh, interaction. And also, there is an imaginary index, you know, I here. That, that means, uh, you know, orbitals are kind of rotating. So it's kind of orbiting around the nu nucleus, okay? But, you know, in calculating exchange in the process, uh, this, you know, imaginary index, you know, plays a very important role. Okay? So, uh, and somehow, you know, my colleague, uh, you know, Joe Jackery and Guignard Carioli, they noticed that because of, uh, you know, this uh, complicated uh, wave function, you know, the coupling between two uh, J1 moment is, you know, very much, you know, complicated. And when, you know, uh, those iridium oxygen octahedron share edge you know, like this, you know, they share edge, and you have two 90 degree bond, okay? And if we consider only super extended process, Super exchange, okay, through oxygen. Uh, then you have kind of two oxygen between two J1 half moment, okay. And uh, if you you know consider super exchange, you know uh, you know among X Y Y G G X, you know specific orbital state is in charge of uh, you know electron hopping, right? And uh, they found uh, because of a uh, two oxygen here, and uh, imagine index I. Uh, those, you know, super exchange paths, exchange hopping paths, interfere with each other. And as a result, you know, conventional exchange, you know, coupling is zero because of interference. So they, those, those two paths act as interferometer. And, uh, you know, conventional anti fellow exchange is kind of zero. That's what they found. So therefore, uh, they find dominant, you know, process is, you know, uh, dominant process is uh, kind of fully occupied the uh, carpet below one half to one half. So uh, electron kind of hop, you know, from J3 half to J1, J1 half. And uh, once, you know, uh, you transfer one electron from uh, site one to site two, okay, uh, you have kind of a front coupling between three half and uh, one half. But that's kind of a, another key. And because of the coupling, uh, you have special, special quantized axis, and the coupling is quite easy. Okay. So therefore, this is uh, spin one half like. Okay. However, you know, because of uh, this interference, you know, uh, exchange is a bit you know, complicated. And they have you know, uh, ferromagnetic interaction, and uh, quite you know, easy. Okay. So to make a you know, long story in short, you know, because of the you know, specific uh, nature of uh, this wave function, uh, you know, the super exchange interaction is very isotropic. Only when two spins are perpendicular to this iridium oxygen plane, you know, there is fellow magnetic interaction. But otherwise, interaction is zero. So here, actually, we have a very important ingredient of a Kitaev model. Uh, Ising, you know, fellow, equivalent to spin R half. Now, so nature is kind of great. We didn't create intentionally. It already exists. 
And uh, this compound was studied you know, from battery people as a candidate for lithium battery. Okay? So, uh, my way, I just told uh, you know, uh, Joe Jackley, oh, there is a Hancom compound uh, made of uh, you know, lithium and iridium. And then this compound is lithium 2, iridium 3. And as I told you in this morning, this structure can be derived from sodium chloride. So you can make uh, triangularis, you remember, by inserting a lithium. And by uh, replacing uh, you know, one out of three iridium with uh, non magnetic lithium, you can create a Hancom radius. So this is it, right? Now, so uh, you can see network of octahedra, like this, Hancom radius. And as you see, uh, J share edge, right? So you have 90 degree bond interferometer. So this should you know, give rise to uh, eating you know, ferromagnetic interaction. And if you know, I, I, I take a look at you know, one specific uh, you know, iridium oxygen octahedron, okay, they are connected to three neighbors because of hand camera this. And there are three orthogonal edge okay, in uh, octahedron. Okay, so somehow uh, three bond, uh, as you know, three orthogonal edge planes. Okay, so therefore this plane give you X, you know, Ising, you know, fellow. This give Y Ising fellow. This give you G Ising fellow, right? So if you know, we have only super exchange, okay, uh, this gives you idea of you know, materialization of the model. But, of course, uh, super exchange is not the only exchange path. You know, it turned out to be uh, quite a big issue to materialize quantum spin liquid. But, of course, but, you know, at, at this point, you know, my point is uh, somehow nature is great. They don't know anything about Kitai, but somehow uh, those compound captured you know, essential ingredient of Kitai model. Okay, that's kind of excitement. And somehow, uh, you know, everybody rushed into those, you know, compound. But as you see, you know, uh, Curie-Weiss plot, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Curie-Weiss, you know, temperature is something like a minus in 100. That means anti ferromagnetic but I discussed the uh, ferromagnetic easing interaction. But like uh, Curie Weiss tells you, anti ferromagnetic. Okay, so uh, here you already see something uh, unfavorable comes into this problem. Next, you know, uh, if you do see susceptibility, you can see clear kink here and there. So th that means uh, there is, you know, anti ferromagnetic long range ordering. And in fact, uh, you know, as you know, many you know, speakers emphasize, uh, this compound uh, made of sodium shows a zigzag you know, anti ferromagnetic ordering, and uh, this compound shows spiral magnetic ordering. Uh, we kind of created the three dimensional analog of this compound. Okay. So, what we, yeah, so this compound we accidentally found, and the name to, you know, uh, to, you know Hyper Hancom. Okay? So uh, this is kind of a two dimensional Hancom lattice. Okay? And the Hancom lattice you can view as you know, like a, this zigzag chain connected by bridging you know, bond, like you know, red, okay, zigzag chain. And then you rotate this you know, zigzag chain up and then connect to the next layer. Okay? But still, all you know, iridium site is kind of equivalent. And that's 320 degree bond. So th this is nothing but uh, you know, three dimensional analog of Heinkam analysis. And there are many theorists, including Yon Bak Kim, uh, you know, uh, checked the you know, grand state of uh, you know, hyper Heinkam analysis. And uh, they showed the uh, you know, kind of same uh, KTF, you know, quantum spin liquid with Majorana fermium could be grand state. But nevertheless, uh, those compound. Unfortunately, uh, we find that you know, long-range kind of order state. 
And the ruthenium chloride uh, showed up a uh, new generation of uh, you know, honeycomb in a compound. Again, you know, they have kind of same uh, you know, uh, structure features. You know, uh, honeycomb lattice of uh, you know, octahedron, edge shared. But they do show uh, long range ordering at 13 Kelvin. But nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, people try to check, you know, high energy excitation. And uh, they saw kind of some signature of uh, continuum excitation in this compound. And they say, you know, this could be a kind of high energy signature of, uh, you know, Kitayafinum continuum. And also, uh, they applied a magnetic field uh, parallel to Hankam layer and uh, found uh, those uh, zigzag anti ferromagnetic order disappeared. And somehow, system remains you know, paramagnetic down to low temperature. And uh, this could be you know, uh, spin liquid like phase. And uh, you know, uh, Yuji Matsuda found uh, quantized uh, you know, thermal fall effect in this uh, you know, critical region. So in that sense, uh, you know, uh, we don't see you know, real quantum spin liquid state. But somehow, you know, we, we are shared, you know, our system is very close to Kitafino quantum spin liquid. So I think the time is kind of up. So let, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of a last year, two messages I want to deliver you is uh, most, you know, recent uh, progress. And the one is, you know, uh, you know, by, you know, my colleagues. And, uh, you know, you just, you know, modify compound by replacing uh, lithium in between with, you know, proton hydrogen. And uh, just, just, it's kind of black magic, you know, somehow by replacing a lithium with, you know, hydrogen, uh, somehow the signature of uh, long range ordering is gone, okay? And uh, NMO, you know, you, you see the state of nothing down to 1K. So this is the same Hankam compound but doesn't show any sort of uh, long range you know, ordering down to below 1K. So somehow on Hankam lattice, uh, we found the quantum spin liquid state. But somehow uh, we checked you know, low line excitation and uh, you know, below 10K, somehow uh, specific heat is dominated by uh, lattice and uh, we don't see any kind of magnetic you know, contribution. But as I said, you know, uh, we are supposed to see, uh, you know, uh, ordering of uh, G2 flux at low temperature around 1K, if it is a pure type, right? So in that sense, uh, we found, uh, you know, quantum spin liquid, but somehow it doesn't follow, you know, uh, kind of prediction for pure type system. And uh, somehow uh, additional ingredient uh, seems to be playing some role. And uh, at the moment, we don't know what kind of quantum spin liquid it is. And the second uh, recent you know, progress is you know, uh, coming from uh, Yuji Matsuda. And uh, this uh, ruthenium uh, chloride system, as I said, you know, uh, by applying field, uh, you can suppress long range ordering. And uh, the only thing I'm kind of worrying about is uh, he actually, you know, if you take a look at the magnetic data, yeah, because you apply field as large as 9, 10 Tesla, okay? So you have, you know, big, you know, in this moment of 0 0.6, 0 0.7 mu V, okay? So in, in, in that sense, uh, you know, uh, a certain fraction of entropy kind of lost. But still, you know, Yuji Matsuda observed, uh, you know, quantization of uh, whole effect, okay? So uh, half, you know, quantization state, and uh, that is kind of predicted for my and Kaila edge state, and that's kind of a hot in topics. So uh, my conclusion for this uh, tech part is uh, somehow, yeah, reality comes in, and uh, in many compound, uh, I observed uh, long range you know, ordering, but uh, some uh, new progress you know, came up very recently, and uh, we have some sort of a quantum spin liquid. We don't know what it is, but on hand camera this, and uh, we see some signature of uh, uh, topological chiral edge state 
in kind of retaining chloride. In that sense, uh, we are kind of about there. Okay. So uh, long story, in short. So I, I started, you know, uh, talking about uh, many exotic uh, phases of correlated electrons, and I emphasized, uh, you know, kind of phase combination between them. And uh, quantum spin liquid state is uh, my favorite. Okay, and uh, I, I believe a fascinating state of electric matter. You know, uh, it's fit to my mind of uh, Jen. You know, the state of nothingness. And uh, if you could feel kind of rapid, you know, progress in materialization, you know, uh, I'm kind of more than happy about it. And uh, as you see, uh, this field uh, kind of uh, intimate uh, collaboration between theory and experiment quite important, okay? So, uh, you know, experiment have to handle with uh, kind of disorder and so on, and uh, we have to handle with kind of chemistry. But on the other hand, uh, you know, theorists, uh, you know, uh, those are kind of too complicated, and you know, they have to rely on kind of finite size uh, numerics, and uh, somehow we have to compensate each other intimately. And in that sense, uh, this is kind of a, you know, interesting field where, you know, uh, theory and the experiment can collaborate uh, very seriously, intimately, okay? So if you, you can kind of join us, uh, you know, I would be more than happy about it. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>